In Ukraine, Russian forces are preparing for a new phase of the war in the east and south. To oversee it, Russian President Vladimir Putin is assigning the same general who previously led Russia's punishing campaign in Syria. And in Kyiv, visiting Western leaders have made new pledges for weapons. But the country's leaders say they need even more and faster. Special correspondent Simon Ostrovsky reports from Kyiv. In the eastern city of Barvinkova, soldiers and volunteers wait for war. During World War II, the biggest tank battle happens here, and I think history will repeat itself. There will be a lot of troops. It will be a fight. Some of their equipment is older than they are, but the soldiers make do. Ancient or not, the main thing is it works. In our hands, everything works. Even a stick will shoot. We use everything we're given. According to satellite images, Russian tanks are moving to the south and east. They'll focus on the Donbass region, parts of which are already controlled by pro-Russia separatists. Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitro Kuleba. Ukraine won the battle for Kyiv. Now another battle is coming, the battle uh, for Don Donbass. Unable to topple the capital city, Russian troops left a trail of destruction. Each day brings shocking new discoveries. They tortured them, threw them in the water. You can see where they threw them. Animals, beasts. There's no other way to say it. Despite the barbarity, President Volodymyr Zelensky said he would continue to negotiate with Russia. He also urged Western allies to speed up weapons deliveries. All they sent, all this equipment, all this weapon they sent already, as I think, I, I think it's, it's for, for some of this kind of equipment, it's too late. And in Vatican City, Pope Francis commemorated the start of Holy Week by calling for peace. Christ is once more nailed to the cross in mothers who mourn the unjust deaths of husbands and sons. He is crucified in refugees who flee from bombs with children in their arms. Lay down your arms and start an Easter truce. And Simon joins me now from Kyiv. Simon, we heard in your report the Ukrainian foreign affairs minister say that Ukraine had won the battle of Kyiv. Do residents there feel that way? Do they feel safe now? I think uh, residents here are still recovering from the shock of what's happened because every day there's just another shoe that drops in terms of bad news about where new graves are being found and where new victims are being found. And so people are very much still trying to recover uh, Ukrainian forces here, which were instrumental in defending Kiev and defeating the Russian force that came down in this direction from the north, um, are now being transferred to uh, positions in that area. So the Ukrainian military is now recalibrating, and people living in this region are having to come to terms with what happened here while the war continues. Yeah. We also heard accounts today uh, of Russian forces looting homes and stores in occupied parts of Ukraine. What have you seen? Well, uh, I've visited several towns uh, where Russian forces have been, and in each one of them, except for the cities where fighting was too heavy to loot, the looting was uh, nearly universal. We went to uh, a little place called Ozera, uh, near Hostomel, which was the site of really fierce fighting. But in Ozera itself, most of the houses are still intact. That's from the outside. But once you go inside, you see what the Russian soldiers actually did to residents' property. Some of the residents I was speaking with there told me that they literally backed a truck up into the yard of many of the houses and just unloaded everything um, that was inside those houses of any value, put them in, a back of, in the back of the truck, and drove away. Houses were completely ransacked. Uh, expensive audiovisual equipment was taken. Everything down to the silverware uh, was even taken. Um, a woman uh, told us in the Chernihiv region that they had taken even the clothes and the underwear. Her husband, who was standing next to her when she was telling me this, was wearing the only clothes that he had left uh, after the Russian soldiers uh, had uh, gone through their house and used it as a base for a couple of weeks hmm. um, after the villagers fled. Special correspondent Simon Ostrovsky reporting for us tonight in Kyiv. Simon, thank you. And a note, our coverage of Ukraine is supported in part by the Pulitzer Center.